Hi, and today we're going to help you understand overdrive pedals, which will hopefully help you choose the right one for you. Hey guys, welcome to that fella show. Dan here. Mick here. Hello. Thick and fruity, Dan. Oh man. That was thick and fruity. I am I'm emotionally aroused. Again. Today. Yet, yet again. Uh, <laughs> that was uh, that's my favourite tube screaming, that just out of interest. That is mine too. Just so you know. It is a Keeley modded TS808 Plus without the true bypass mod that I bought for my birthday. Bought myself for my birthday in about 2005. Wow. Or thereabouts, 2006, something like that. And then I hit it with the Magic pedal. Yes, which I also bought for my birthday in uh, 2011 or 12. Wow. Uh, and would you believe, I think that, with the shipping, cost me about the same as that. I do believe it. I do believe it. Um, I right, so on to today's show. There's a, a very ambitious title in today's show because we really want you to understand overdrive pedals. We really, really do. In the way that Dan and I have been privileged enough to come to understand them over the years of doing this show. Mm -hmm. um, so what do we say, Dan? We, we want to demystify some terms. Yes, indeed. What are those terms? So we're going to talk about gain and clipping. One. We're going to talk about headroom. Yes. We good. always talk about headroom. Yep. EQ, and tone stack, tone stacking EQ. Symmetrical, asymmetrical. Yes. All these things that we, when we talk about an overdrive, we say, oh, wow, there's a really nice mid boosted, low headroom. Hard clipping, soft clipping, um, yellow. Asymmetrically uh, clipped. <laughs> so without further ado then, and that will... That will get more obvious as the show goes on. We're going to swap out these pedals that are very, very popular and that you will know, which we're going to listen to, for some other pedals that you, you, we can tweak some of the things that we're talking about. Yeah, good shout. So, Dan, shall we... Um, I think we should start with an mid-boosted, asymmetrically soft-clipped... Okay. ...low headroom overdrive. Sounds good. What would you choose in that in that sense? That would be the SD1, I believe. <laughs> okay. Uh, amps we're using today, we have the the Marshall and we have the Vox AC15. So I've given up. The Marshall 1987X. It's a 50 watt plexi. But the reason we've chosen these amps today is because they're set in a pretty open manner. They don't have a strong EQ bias in any significant direction. They're just Pretty clean, mm. pretty open, fairly transparent. And, and we are another term we're yeah, yeah, to. yeah. Well, we are going to talk about that a bit later on as far as the amps yeah. are concerned. But just so the, uh, yeah, amps by themselves. It's a goodly wholesome noise. It's glorious. Okay, so what did we say? Um... Asymmetrically soft clipped, uh, mid humped, low, low headroom. Thank you. 
strongly felt the need to do that for some strange reason. Yeah. Okay, let's move on. Um, all of the characteristics we just mentioned, mid-humped, low headroom, soft-clipped, mm -hmm. will retain. Mm -hmm. We'll now go to symmetrically soft-clipped. Beautiful. Let's move along. Don't yes. be afraid by the terms because we're going to explain them in due course. Let's move to a high headroom. Okay. Symmetrically hard clipped. Symmetrically hard clipped. Yes. Slightly mid boosted. Okay. Overdrive. Yep. Now, let's stay with the hard clipping. Yep. Yeah. And let's go for more of a mid-pushed, uh, but higher gain. So what have we got? Uh, higher gain. Yep. Lower headroom. Symmetrically clipped? Symmetrically hard clipped? Symmetrically hard clipped. Um, not mid-boosted overdrive. Uh, if we're talking about the rat, yeah. we're talking about mid-boost at exactly the same frequency as the clon. Really? Yep. Ha <laughs> ha! Found the rat then? I'll start. <laughs> So good. So, so let's, good. let's finish this section then with a lowish headroom, non mid humped, soft asymmetrically clipped. Perfect. Overdrive. We're going to come up with some icons to put on the screen to help this through, by the way. Perfect. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Perfection. Perfection. All right, we chucked a lot of terms at you there. We're going to uh, swap these classic pedals out. You've had a good listen to them. Uh, and we'll bring in some others where we can vary some of these things and get into this a bit more deeply. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Uh, yeah, sorry. We had a little pause. It took us a little while to do that, uh, in truth. So what you saw on the board before was a bunch of very, very common, highly popular and many sold pedals. What we've got on the board now are less so, but they do have uh, tweakable characteristics of some of the things we're going to discuss. Yes. So, Dan, I think at this point it would be a good opportunity to talk about what is happening mm. inside. And we're going to say a normal overdrive pedal, right? And a normal overdrive pedal is anything that you've seen today. Mm -hmm. uh, and a normal overdrive pedal is characterized by what, Dan? Okay, so we've got, let's first of all think of the stages of an overdrive pedal, okay? And we'll, we'll, we'll throw up a graphic now. So we've got an input stage, okay, which basically takes your signal and gets it ready for whatever the pedal's going to do. Then we have the gain stage, which is characterized by the way uh, it, you know, we clip, we, we, we clip that signal. Amplify and then clip, Amplifies, presumably. Yeah, amplify and clip, and, yeah. and also some, some tonal shaping going on there. Yeah. Then we have our tone stack, you know, the, um, the EQ section, which again, gives us further shaping of that signal. Then the output stage, getting the signal ready to leave and enter into the world. Mm. Yep. And I mean, that's a really basic, understanding of what's going on but you can do a like within that you can have you know take your eq stage you can put one eq before the gain stage after the gain stage you can have signals going around the gain stage and mixing back in the clon's a really good example um you've got a where, where we have the the input stage so we've got the buffer on the input then we have our clipping section of the clon which is a hard clipping section. We've got our clipping diodes going after the amplification, but we have these two other paths around the that circuit that, that mix in a bit of the original original signal. Yeah. Right. And the clon's really interesting because when you turn the gain, you're actually mixing. It's a mix knob. It's a mix knob from yeah, the yeah. It's one part clean signal part into the gain. So, it, you know, this is there are so many different ways to do that. But yeah. understanding that we have our input stage. Our gain stage, you know, clipping, shaping, the tone stage, um, and then the output stage. And again, you can, you know, take you can take a tone stage out and just have clipping straight out. Yeah, you know, like like a fuzz pedal does, for example. So I think it, the, the purposes of simplifying it like that is because that's predominantly what's going on. Certainly on the overdrive pedals we just had on the board before this section, mm -hmm. and it's fair to say that you can achieve those things in different ways using different styles of. Uh, components and different approaches to the circuit. However, what we're discussing today is the classic um, configuration you'd find in any of those pedals you've just seen. So Boss Blues Driver, Ibanez Tube Screamer, Boss SD1, mm -hmm. Klon, albeit a bit messed about in the Klon. The Rat. The Rat. Yep. Most overdrive pedals. Yes. It's fair to say, isn't yep. it? Yep. Have an input section. Yep. Then a bit of amplification that's done with a, an operational amplifier. Uh, yes. An IC. Or, yeah, or transistors, but... But, uh, yep, an, an increase in amplitude in yep. some manner. Then something once you've once you've increased that something to clip it and make it distorted. Yep, and then the output section. Oh, yes. then EQ. The, so yeah, the EQ shaping that from there. Yep. Yep, and then the output section. Yep. And in terms of the amplification, the clipping bit and the EQ, as Dan said, they don't necessarily have to be in that order. Yeah, most of the stuff we've seen today is that is that. Um, but like for example, if you've got a they call a dumbbell-esque overdrive. But what they might do is take a mid-frequency thing, put it before the gain, and leave the, the backs and all the bass and treble thing after the gain. So, you know, it's it's what you'll see is how creative these designers are when they're coming up with the stuff. It's mind-blowing. The more you look into it, there's some really, really clever people out there. And, and basically, how you mix all that stuff together and how you achieve it is what gives you the character of the... Yes. Of the overdrive pedal in the end. Absolutely. So let's 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 take some of these, shall we? Yep. Gain. Should we okay. start with gain? Let's start with gain. Great. So 
after the input stage, generally the input stage will be a buffer, some description, all right, giving the a, a nice low impedance signal so that it's really stable and then you can manipulate that in a number of different ways, okay? And that we will hit a gain stage. And what we'll do with that is we'll amplify. Okay, so um, let's have a look at um, the, uh, let's have a look at the clon. All right, so that hits uh, an op amp uh, called a TL072, like a really standard basic op amp. Op amp looks like a really bad square spider with tiny metal legs, yes. usually. Right. So it's a um, it's a basically a, an IC package that basically has two transistors in it. Yeah. Okay. So what what we're going to do with that that operational amplifier is we're going to use that to amplify the signal. Okay. Um, what we're going to do with that signal then is a number of different things. The first thing we're going to do is then that's going to hit our clipping diodes. Right. But actually, Clip. before we get to clipping diodes, let's turn the gain all the way down. Yep. On that, and we'll just hear the increase in volume on the clon on the clon. So when you turn the gain down, as Dan said earlier, we are taking the overdrive circuit out. Absolutely. Basically. So this is this is this is gain more. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Increase in gain gets louder. Yeah. Uh, the, you, you're also hearing the EQ circuit there, but. Yeah. So there's no clipping there at all. That's just an increase in volume. Now, it's one thing that's really interesting um, that we might talk a bit more when we talk about headroom, but the clone is doing something that's amazing. Yeah. Um, just with the use of that extra gain and how it keeps the clarity of that signal. Very, very clever. But we'll, we'll get into that when we'll talk about headroom. So but that's just gain, extra more. And gain is a um, in the in the context of guitar sounds. Normally, when you say gain, you normally mean overdrive, don't you? You say a high gain amplifier or heavy gain sounds. Yeah, it, gain is usually used to explain the amount of overdrive. But actually, gain, like in a mic preamp or whatever, is just more signal, louder, sure. increasing the amplitude of that waveform. Yep, as opposed to my home situation where I'm stress eating and the gain equals about three kilos. <laughs> um, but yeah, gain is more. I can't, ever since IK Multimedia brought out Amplitude, I can't say Amplitude anymore. <laughs> it's Amplitude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Um, so once you've got that increase in, in level then, yep. increase in gain, this is what happens inside every overdrive pedal, in the front, make it louder. Yep. You then need to create some overdrive from something. Yes. So... How are we doing that? Okay, so a, a really common way to do it, and you know that we see in all of these circuits, is with something called diodes. Okay, now diodes are basically uh, they're a semiconductor, and they will allow current to travel in one direction, and they have a thing called a forward voltage. Now, what that means is that if you imagine that we have our waveform, okay. And the forward voltage will only let the voltage travel up a certain way before it gets clipped off, okay? So if we have a look at, um, because we've got the clon on, yep. what we're going to do now is we're going to dial in the gain. And basically, I think we should dial the gain in all the way in so we hear yeah, what I'll happens just, with these. You yeah. play, I'll just turn it up. So okay. what, what we're doing is we're, we're leaving the um, amplification bit the same yep. and we're adding in those clipping diodes. Yes. So... All different sorts of diodes will give you different sorts of sound. We'll get right. onto that. Okay, so yeah, here we go. We'll hear the clipping diodes now um, that come uh, directly after the gain stage in this pedal, which gives us what we call hard clipping.
So it wasn't, we got a bit more volume, but what we heard was the signal now being distorted. Yep. And it, I think we should also point out at this point, there's a lot of volume coming out of that clon that may well have been pushing the amps ever so slightly into overdrive as yeah, well. Yeah, that's a whole but it's, other thing. It, in terms of what's happening to the waveform, it's the same thing, isn't sure. it? It's exactly. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But yeah. you're predominantly hearing the clon. The amps are set pretty clean. Yeah. Cool. So interesting, interesting thing with the clon, we have um, our diodes in a clon are what we call uh, germanium diodes, right? And they have a, a forward voltage of 0.35 volts, which means that they will actually clip really early on. And because the diodes are placed after our op amp, right, directly after. It's what we call hard clipping. Okay. Right? That's what hard clipping is. That's what hard clipping is. Those diodes are placed directly after the gain stage. Yep. Okay? So if we looked at the signal directly after the diodes, what we would see is our waveform and quite a hard, you know, those edges would be quite hard. But now if we have a look at what happens that's called hard clipping. If we now have a look at soft clipping, okay, right? Now, soft clipping is what happens when those diodes are placed in what we call the feedback loop of our op amp, right? So what happens with our op amp? Um, and it's the same if you think about the feedback loop in your amplifier. It's basically a, p a portion of the signal from the output is fed back into the input, all right? And that gives us stability of the signal, it helps with um, keep things clean, it helps with distortion. So what we're going to do is going to, instead of having those diodes directly on the output, we're actually going to put those diodes in the feedback loop. The so as we feed the signal back in and more of that signal back in, we're going to have, we're going to achieve what we call soft yeah. clipping. It's not exactly the same thing, but if you think about the difference between having something in series and in parallel, so you've got the clipping diodes after the the yeah. op amp, and now we've got them. Yeah, not exactly in parallel. Sure, but not exactly. So it's in series, it. and yeah. like everything's it, that part of that signal is all going through it. But what we're doing now is we're just we're just hear, hearing the the feedback loop going through it. So um, probably I would say let's have a look at the 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 Blues Pro. Yeah. So that's a really good example of soft clipping. I, I'm going to put it in. So these are silicon diodes. What's really interesting about this Super Blues Pro, Pro, maybe just have a look on the MI Audio website and, and read about it, but what it gives you, which not all overdrive pedals do, is you've got two... You've got two clippers. Clippers, clippers yep. Two clippers after the, um, after the op amp, and those switches give you options for the two clippers. Yes. So you can have them both the same, or you can have them... Different, different. yep. And or both the same or different is... So you have both the same, you have symmetrical clipping, different, you have asymmetrical clipping. And there are like loads of different sorts of asymmetrical clipping. We'll get into that in a second. But for now, I've just got both silicon diodes on. Yep. Now, now silicon diodes are really interesting. So they have a forward voltage of 0 0.7 volts, which means they have a bit more headroom before there's clipping. Interesting. Right? So for that, the lighter side of clipping, um, you know, those... The, the, the lighter gain pedals will generally use those higher um, forward voltages in their diodes. Um, and then we get to things like LEDs, which have much higher um, forward voltages. Um, uh, we've got one of the Odyssey that we'll have listened to. Oh, and also in the um, the ages as well. So what we're doing is we're just, we're mixing and matching different sorts of uh, um, diodes to give us those different forward voltages so we can basically start shaping our different cutoff points in the signal. Yeah. Okay. And so you you also hear we're skirting around the edge of a headroom discussion. So these yes. things are all we, we will get to all of them, but they are all completely intertwined. Yep. Just yeah. And to clear anything up, I'm touching the pedals this side. Mick's going to be touching things that side. Uh, you're, so you're touching the Odyssey I'm touching as well. The, I'm touching the. Um, I'll touch the Odyssey. Yeah. And the Blues Pro. If, if you're watching this, like in a while's time, it is currently June. 2020. If you're watching this in the future, COVID 19 is on at the moment, so we're we're doing our best to social socially distance and yes. not cross contaminate with touching things. Yeah. So um, I'll get you to play, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to start with the drive. Yeah. At minimum. Yeah. Now what's going to happen as I turn the drive up? I'm going to be introducing more of the clipping circuit, right, in with these diodes in the feedback loop. Yep. And then you hear what happens to the drive then.
So two things there. You'll notice that when I had the volume all the way down, it sounded quite dark. As I turned it up, we started to hear what was happening in the feedback loop because in that feedback loop, we also have EQ filters. Oh, okay. Interesting. Shaping the sound of the, the, the distortion, basically. But the other thing that happened is, is as I turned the drive up, it was getting louder. Yep. So I had to compensate with the volume on the left-hand side. However, as soon as it starts to clip, I've already I've hit the rails, right? So from then on, when I turn up, it just it's it's more distortion, Can't but I'm not louder. getting more volume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So um, in this in the context of clipping, then at the moment we are symmetrically clipped with what silicon diode? With the silicon diode. Yep. Can we hear um, symmetrically clipped? What's the other option? So an, we've got a, we, yeah, we got a, we got a, a MOSFET in there, like a little MOSFET uh, transistor that's acting as a diode. Oh, interesting. So um, I think we've got the the gate is tied to the source. And so it basically did the same job as a diode, still at sort of 0.7 forward voltage on it, but it's a completely different sound. So here's the sound of the um, silicon diodes. <laughs> Much louder. Right, so we've we've gone from silicon diode clipping, yep. symmetrical silicon diode clipping to yep. symmetrical MOSFET clipping, MOSFET clipping and yep. it's got way louder. Why? Uh, so it's the, the nature of the way that the MOSFET's clipping the signal now. Yep. Okay. Um, so if could you just match that volume for a sec so that we're yep. a similar volume? Yep. So what we're hearing there is what we call the knee of the of the clipping. So if you think of the silicon where we have quite a hard knee, right? That edge is really hard. And you hear that in sort of that more, it sounds gainier, yep. right? Whereas the MOSFET seems to have a softer knee. It takes a little bit longer to, to, um, to clip. Um, we're getting a bit, it's a bit more volume, a bit more dynamic range, but it's still... You know, it's, it's still clipping, but it, does, it sounds softer. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean it doesn't. Sound, it sounds harder to me because it's louder. It's louder, but yeah. we don't. Sorry, don't, we don't have that fuzzy edge to it. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I mean, all, it's, in terms of the playing dynamic, there, whatever the sound difference, um, I felt like I could just be gentler on the guitar with the MOSFETs because there was much more dynamic range. Sure, more headroom. We'll come yep. on to that. Yeah. Okay. So we've heard. So let's hear. Uh, Let's hear with no clipping. Okay. Can we? Yep. So this is, is that an option. Yes, it is, absolutely. So what we're going to do now, we're going to take those diodes out of the signal path. Yep. So. Sorry, I just immediately stopped playing with the same um, force on the guitar because it was five times louder. Yeah, because we're no longer we're no longer limiting that signal. Yeah. So it's basically wide open. There's that you'll have a a a, um, a filter, you know, sort of a tone shaping filter in that feedback loop, but there's no diodes, so there's nothing to to clip that signal. Okay, so let's hear one MOSFET and one silicon diode. Then. Right. So if, and if we clip the different sides of the waveform differently, we have asymmetric. Asymmetric clipping. So both the same, symmetrical. Clipping one side differently, we have asymmetric clipping. So there's a MOSFET on one side and there's a silicon on one side. Unsurprisingly, it's an interesting mix of the two. Yeah. You hear, you hear the fuzzy elements of the game. Yep. Um, but you also hear the clarity of the the MOSFET. Yeah. And the playing experience is somewhere between. What I think 
is happening though is that I'm discerning uh, I'm discerning the mismatch and going oh I'm not sure whether I'm hearing a gain sound or a clean sound it's like clean sound and fuzzy sound in parallel right yeah it does yeah, yeah. Like, I mean it, that, that's not what's happening by no, the way no but it does it, it does uh, have that element to it sure. and I think just hear me out on this I wonder if I was hearing ugliness in some of the harmonics I felt like I was hearing more ugliness in the harmonics out of the guitar. Okay. Just could you try giving me um, full on silicon diode clipping and then change it to one or the other? Match. Yep, yeah, okay. Yeah, mixed. Here we go. <laughs> That MOSFET must have a higher forward voltage there because that gain is... is it's just because it's so much louder. So I, much, so I much can louder. hear so much more is, is, yeah. is all that's happening. Um, yeah, so, okay, so there we have uh, asymmetrical clipping. But another classic way to do asymmetrical clipping is to have one side of the waveform not clipped at all, all right, and the other side of the waveform clipped. So if we leave the MOSFET on yeah. and then I leave turn the other side of the, of the, uh, the waveform off, basically. Yeah. So this is... Um, Another form of asymmetrical so th clipping. This is going to be loud. This presumably. is going to be loud. That's well cool. I really like that the the moss vet side. What's I tell you is what's interesting about that is if you were to buy a tube screamer, for example, mm -hmm. and you plug it into your amp and you mess about with the volume and gain controls, and you've got that much variance yep. into your amp. Yep. That once you add in those clipping options, options yeah. becomes that yeah. much variance, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. And the the relevance of this is in isolation through these amps, you know, you're hearing the same pedal through these amps. If you were then to plug into an amp that was very clean or very gained, mm -hmm. the whole experience would be different again. Mm -hmm. So this is really about all of the things that we're discussing today are about choosing attributes in your pedal that fit well with your guitar and amp. With your guitar and amp and the way that you play. I guess... We've done shows on that before, so we can't spend too long on that. Yep. But it, it is really worth making the point yeah. that you may not have liked one or any of those sounds in this context with these amps. Yes. But you might find that that is perfect for, for your amp doing. and your yeah. guitar. Yep. In that. In that. Totally. Yeah. Okay. So that's our that's our uh, our soft clipping, you know, being gone between symmetrical and asymmetrical diodes. Okay. So some really good examples. Um, like the OD1 and the SD1 we heard before, asymmetrical clipping, we've got, uh, in that side, we've got two diodes on one one side of the waveform and three diodes on the other. Okay. Right? So that's, and basically by putting those two diodes uh, in series, um, we're increasing the, the the forward voltage before they clip, yep. you know. So that's that sound. The tube streamer is fascinating because, again, it's soft clipping and it's symmetrically clipped, but we have... Um, this low pass filter in the uh, in the feedback loop. So basically, what that means is, I think it's um, as you hit uh, it's like seven hundred and fifty hertz or something. But everything below that, as you start to go, the frequencies below that become less and less distorted. So all the frequencies above that go through the clipping diodes. You know what I mean? So it goes through and it becomes distorted, but the, the lower the frequencies go, the less distorted they are. So what you end up with is bottom frequencies that are almost not touched. That are cleaner. That are cleaner. Which is why a tube streaming works so well into your deluxe reverb, which has already got way ton of bottom end. So you're saying, okay, tube screamer, don't distort this crazy bottom yeah, end. Yeah. I mean that's it's genius. It's okay, so, okay. So, so I mean, clever. That is huge that, that point in itself is hugely important. You know, we've we've talked about gain and we've talked about clipping so far, yep. all these things are frequency dependent because yes. you can increase gain and you can clip at different frequencies. Yeah, and and 
also amplitude dependent. So yeah. if I'm playing light and I'm not putting the amount of voltage into that circuit that needs to clip, it's not going to clip. Yeah. As soon as I go, eh, and you're going to increase that amplitude, it's going to clip. Yeah. We're in danger of you being even more confused when you started watching this video. I definitely am. You, <laughs> you start thinking about these things and you think, wow, everything's so variable. I've, look, I, I've got to say that I've been the last couple of days getting ready for this show and, and looking at the schematics and stuff. And I've just been, honestly, I've been humbled by some of the genius designers that have been around for ages. Yeah, like yeah. looking at the original design of the TS9, yeah. it's incredible. Absolutely incredible. That's the, actually the switching on it mm. is probably the, one of the cleverest <laughs> thing about it, you know. Uh, but yeah, it's it's amazing the way they would shape the tone. I guess talking about shaping tone, we're going to move on to the, the tone stacks, the EQ. Yeah, and so let, let let's get it said that we are talking. Let's restate the the fact that we're talking about pedals that operate in this way. So they use a an op amp to create the increase in gain, and then we are talking about a clipping circuit using diodes or something else. For that, there are other ways of doing this in different pedal designs, yep. but this is the most common, so we'll yep. stick with it. Okay, so we've upped our signal, yes, and we've we've clipped it, and we've either clipped it symmetrically mm -hmm. using the same diodes on either side of the waveform, yep, or we've clipped it asymmetrically by not using one at all or using different ones on each side, yes, and we've done it either in a hard fashion by yes. putting the clipping diodes straight after the IC, perfect, or we've done it in a soft fashion by having it in the feedback loop of the IC. Perfect. Yes. Nail it. That's exactly Not bad. what it I didn't is. Know, I genuinely didn't know that before today. Right. There so you go. That, this is good. So we've done that. Yep. We've we've got louder and more distorted. Yes. In in a, in any of those ways. Yes. Now we need to think about EQ. Yeah. So in in some gain stages like the tube screamer for example, they do think about EQ within the gain stage with the, with the filter and the feedback loop. For example, um, and some gain stages, the the EQ it, there'll be a tone stack afterwards, and we're talking about you know there's a couple of different ways to think about it. We can have um, basically like a passive tone control. So the tube screamer, if you think about um, the tube screamer, has got basically a passive tone control. So that with the tone control all the way up, is basically letting all the frequencies that are created in the gain stage and the shaping that happens there letting all those through and you know generally the, the, what the tone control will do on the tube screamer is start to turn those down mm. right interesting or we have a pedal like the clon which has a, like a proper active eq in it so the clon has got um we have a mid hump and the way that the 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 tone is designed you know with the the gain stage and everything we have a mid hump in the clon of about 1k tube screamer is about 740 Hertz, right? One a thousand hertz, a thousand hertz, one k in the clon. But with a tone control in the clon, we have this thing where you can either uh, it's like is it after four hundred hertz, five hundred hertz? We can either start adding treble, or we can take treble away. What bear, bearing in mind where the pot is? Exactly. So add. Exactly. Remove. Yes. Never knew that. Yep. So that's like an, that's that's a proper EQ circuit yeah, where yeah, we're yeah. adding EQ, uh, adding top end, yeah. or taking it away. Yeah. So, you know, every pedal has its own way of shaping that sound, yeah. and that in itself has a massive impact on the way that the that you're perceiving the the distortion that's happening in those um, diodes. All right. So EQ is a massive subject because a um, your overdrive might be happening at different frequencies. Yes. B, because the overall EQ shape of the pedal is vast right across the EQ spectrum. So why don't we just focus in on, appropriately enough, why don't we focus in on the mid-hump question? Yes, okay. What about this? Can we set the Blues Pro up to sound fairly, fairly flat-ish? Yep. And then we'll use our EQ pedals to talk about mid humps. Okay. Does that work? Yeah, perfect. So um, our in these pedals we have our our tone basically happening after the gain stage. You know, the, we, you obviously have your filters as we talked about within the, the clipping itself. Um, but if we, if we we take the clon, for example, where we have a lovely peak at about 1k, which is that that amazing frequency that gives us clarity and detail when we're, when we're going into an amplifier that might already be compressing a bit, yeah. and we need that 
that frequency to push it a little bit harder. So what I'll do... Let's let's talk about that. Set the Blues Pro up, Dan. Yep. Um, and let's... Seeing as you've said 1K, let's let the good people hear what 1K sounds like. Okay. Um, so... Do you want to just hear clean 1K now? Yeah. All right. So I think I, I think that would be interesting. Wouldn't okay. It? Yep. So here's um, our. So here's a uh, here. Um, I'll play a chord and then some single notes. That is 1K. Right on the nose. I remember, <laughs> like, in the 90s, and as soon as I, you know, get my tone on, the first thing I'd do is find 1K and get rid of it completely. Yeah. It's like, no, it's, ugh. Okay, give me some overdrive then. Okay, so let's find a nice sort of flat frequency. Let's go for, um, I would say, let's go for the MOSFETs. <laughs> What I'm so what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to clip it asymmetrically, because as we we're talking about before with the clon, unless the gain is all the way up, we are feeding part of that clean circuit back in. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to try and duplicate that. Okay. And um, so sort of clip it asymmetrically. You have the MOSFETs on one side and and no clipping on the other. Do we know what the trim does in the Blues Pro? Yes, the trim. We've got uh, there's different. It's a different gain stage. Right. Okay. So. <laughs> So I'm just trying to set it up so EQ-wise and there's no drastic changes. Yep. Um, and that's pretty close, I think. Pretty so hard, pretty hard kind of sound. Yeah. Play for me again. We should talk about transparent, but maybe we won't get into that too much in this video. Um, overdrives by their nature usually are all a bit mid-pushed. A little bit, a little bit. Sure. Because there's more mid-range in there than there is the clean sound, right? Yeah. So they, and, and the nature of that pedal does have that yeah. mid range. It can't, can't really dial out. But anyway, that's that's fairly flat. Okay, now we're going to add some one K to that, and then we'll actually we'll add it and we'll take it away. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
let's do that exact thing with a different guitar. Okay. So you can hear how much information in a guitar is around that frequency. It's all of it. Y well, pretty much. No, of course it's not all of it. No. It's such an important part of it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. great. So, you know, so with the clon, where they, they got that bump about 1K. So if we hear the clon now and you'll hear that frequency just as being naturally part of that sound. <laughs> So if I put the if I dial out the one K from the clon. I could feel it on the end of my nose. Yeah. It feels nasal to yeah. me, is is where that frequency is. All right. Um so that's a one K mid mid hump. Let's talk about the classic tube screamer mid hump. Yeah. It's down from there, yeah. It's down from there. So uh, it's, I think, 742 hertz around, yeah, around there, 742, 750, around that area. Okay. Well, luckily, we've on the two EQ pedals we've got, we've got 500 and 800, yes, which got... are either side of 750, so it would be interesting to hear them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's a little bit higher than the Tube Screamer boost, the frequency boost. It's but really interesting because when you, you know, when it's, should be, should be said that there's more, Dan's boosting it more than you would get in a Tube yeah, Screamer yeah, yeah. to accentuate the point. But okay, um, takes the 500 and 800, take the humbucker to quite honky sounding. Yep. Let's see what they do with the single coil. Okay. <laughs> I really want to hear that with the 1K from here. So is that 1K? It's so interesting hearing that with the Strat because it's like, there's a, a, to me, the Strat sounds naturally mid-scooped. Yeah. You know, so when you hear that coming in, it's like, it just sounds mega. Sort of puts it back, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Like what the what the 335 and certainly a P90 type guitar would have sure. around that frequency area. The Tube Screamer puts it back or those, sorry, those frequencies 500, up from 500, so 750 to 1000 really put it back, don't yeah. they? The mid-scoop. But as opposed to, if I hear it with the telly with a bridge pickup, that is like... You know what I mean? Because those mids are all sort of already there. And in that context, it's sort of like, I mean, it's cool, but within, with the Strat, it's just magic. Well, I think within four seconds of playing, you've just explained why you've never really liked Tube Screamers. There, there you go. <laughs> yeah. 
Interesting. That's so cool. Okay, so clearly we could talk about EQ all day and we focused on those mid frequencies there because that's a real key. Yeah. Um, shaping voice. Obviously how they roll off low end is a big deal. Um, certainly as far as tube screamers go and a lot of overdrive pedals, you probably find a bit of low end roll off mm -hmm. um, because you need it to stay clean. The other thing I just wanted to have a quick listen to, Dan, before we move on from EQ is what have you got between 3 and 4K on either of those? Between 3 and 4K? Yeah. Uh, one I've got, well, I've got 4K on one and I've got 3.2 on another. 3.2 is a nice place to be. Okay. Um, could you uh, set me up with a bit more? Let's put the Klon and the Blues Power on. Okay. No, let's not put the Klon on. We'll add that in a minute. Um, just, I just need a, I need this to be a bit gain here. Okay, yeah, to that. Okay. And then you want to add some 3.2 in there. To boost me a little bit at 3.2K. Okay. All right. Now hear that with humbuckers. Okay. So that's what it adds hair on the what of natural the natural compression of going on with the humbuckers yes adds to that sizzle on top it does and uh, um quite often when we process our, process our guitars we'll add a tiny bit of 3.2 just because oh, wow. it gives yeah right to me it's bite yeah it's uh because we use all these terms right so 80 and 100 is chest and thump okay and then one uh, where what we were talking about earlier sort of 750 to uh, to 1.2 is nose and Three point, you know, sort of two and a half to four is bite, and then ten to twelve is air. Yeah, seven point two is my left ankle. <laughs> but once you you can use whatever words you want, but once you if you sit there and you you record a bit of your guitar and pull up a graphic EQ somewhere mm. and just push things up and down, you can as ascribe whatever words you want to yeah. them. But they'll start making sense to you. Yeah, um, and it becomes really useful, obviously. Yep. So the last thing on on tone controls we talk about. Uh, or EQ is actually the placement of EQ in a re in relation to the gain circuit. Right. Okay. So we've got the Hampstead Odyssey here, which is a really interesting pedal. We've got basically there's two sections to it. We've got the gain and tone, which is basically our gain stage, and then we have the EQ, which is the bass treble and our level. So if we have it set up like a normal overdrive, so I'm going to put the EQ post gain stage. Yeah. I'm going to this. These little things down here uh, give us the, the level going into our gain stage. So we can have um, sort of one time, so it's not going to clip much. We can have two times, going to double our wave shape, uh, the, the amplitude, so it will clip easier. Or we're going to five times, which is much more gain going into clipping. Um, but let's, if we put on times two for the moment, then we have our different um, symmetrical or, and two asymmetrical options for dial clipping. Yep. So let's leave it on symmetrical for the moment. And if you can just have uh, Schwang. I need to get rid of this guitar because okay. it, it won't stay in tune. Needs new strings. <laughs> So now with the EQ, 
after the game stage, I'm going to manip manipulate a little bit and you'll hear the, the, the settings, uh, basically they're universal. They, they affect everything, okay? <laughs> Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to shift that EQ before the gain. Okay. So what's going to happen is, as I roll up the bottom end, those frequencies will actually go into clipping before the top end frequencies. As I change that and put top end in and the bottom frequencies, they will clip, the top end frequencies will clip before the bottom end frequencies. So if you remember when before we were talking about um, going through the different, uh, we took the diodes out and we just had all this headroom. But when we took the diodes in, all that headroom, as we turned it up, that headroom went. Yeah. So what you'll hear as I turn the treble up with the diodes in, it'll get to a point where I start clipping, and then the top end will just become more fuzzy as opposed to more trebly. Yep. Makes sense. Okay. Yep, yep. So here we go. So now the EQ is now before the gain stage. <laughs> Lazy bend up. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there one day. But now, with that sound, I'm just going to put the EQ now yep. directly after it. And this is the difference. <laughs> it's so cool. So you're using. The, the point of that is you're using the EQ to shape the texture of the overdrive. Yes. If it's before. Yes. If it's after, you're using it to shape the EQ of the whole sound. Exactly. And that, depending on where your EQ comes in your overdrive pedal, is why that's relevant. Yep. And you can you have multiple EQ sections. Yeah. You know, like talking about the Tube Screamer has got that, that filter in there and then different tone shaping afterwards, you know. So how you, where you put your filters and things in the circuit determines that, you know, the overall sound, you know. So interestingly with EQ, if you have a look then, so when we talked about having a look at the waveform directly after the diodes, but now with our tone circuit in, and we, then we have a look at the waveform and it's very different. Mm -hmm. um, you know, lots of the time we've gone back to more of that sort of a, an elongated triangle shape as opposed to that hard edge thing. Yeah. Um, but... You know the EQ is a massive part of shaping the waveform. I would, I, I would. I've never been a fan of the waveform analysis thing. Yeah. Because each waveform you look at is at a specific frequency. Exactly. So if you decide to compare two overdrive pedals and you look at the way the clipping waveform at one k, mm -hmm. that's going to be very different than what's happening at eighty hertz. Yeah. Or at ten k. Yeah, it it is depending on the design of the pedal. So, yeah. like for, for example, the tube screamer. As we as we go down in frequency, you'll see that clipping stop. Stop, yeah, because you know? it doesn't clip below whatever exactly. the frequency is. But yeah. you might have um, a, you know a hard clipping pedal that clips all the frequencies. Yeah, and so in that you'll see that it basically stays really similar. Really, really the same all the way through. Yeah, so that's fascinating. It is. It? It's incredible and a potential source of great confusion. Sure. <laughs> yeah, but well, that think... again, that's that's just the, that's the design of the filters and and you know low pass filters and things around. That those games so the 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 gain yeah stuff. and I think the whole point in this video is is so that you can just ask a slightly better question about what's happening in this 
yeah. in this overdrive pedal. You know, I don't like tube screamers. Well, why might not you like tube screamers? Might might you not like the headroom characteristics? Might you not like the EQ characteristics? Sure. Might you not like the clipping characteristic? Yeah. And I think it helps you to just to start to look at the pedals that you like and those that you like less and maybe understand a bit more about it. Yeah, because it might be. It's like, well, I put this pedal on and it cuts through. It sounds brilliant. But the, the actual character of the gain is is harsh and fizzy. So you might say, okay, well, I, I like the mid hump, but I want a different characteristic in the gain stage. Or yeah. you might say, I love the way this pedal feels. I love the the breakup in it, but I need, you know, I need something that, that shows off a bit more bottom EQ. Mm. Um, and so it might be an EQ is the answer, or it might be that, you know, you need something that's sort of designed, you know, to work, that will work better with the way that you play. So understanding. Yeah. Those, those, the terminology and how it uh, relates to what you're doing is key. Yep. And understanding that it's all a bit of a melting pot as well. So you can't just go, I like hard clipped overdrives. Yeah, absolutely. Because how they hard clip and where, at what frequency and at yeah. what gain level, yeah. you know, is Because most, the clones are a great example because most people think of the clone as low gain overdrive, but it's yeah. a hard clipper. Well, the, you, never hear, you never hear the gain up where we had it today. Nobody uses it like that. Um, yeah, very few people do. Why? Uh, I don't know. Because it's a hard clipper and it sounds harsh and, and nasty. Oh, yeah. But it, it means some, <laughs> like I know that um, Josh Scott, right. that's his main overdrive with it, it's gain cranked. Yeah, yeah. And know. if it's going into a very gained amplifier, absolutely. Completely different story. Yeah. Well, the thing is, okay, if, I mean, we're going to talk about headroom in a second, but the way that, the way that that clips and the way that circuit is, which is just genius. Is you you know you you can dial in the amount of clean signal that you you mm. want you know around that gain clipping circuit in a and it, the result is which is why a lot of people compare it to the tube screamer mm. we were talking about before how the tube screamer has that low pass filter so that the bottom frequencies aren't you know so we've got a yet. similar thing in the clon where we have this um, this uh, path around the outside of the gain circuit that keeps the low frequencies intact. Now they do it in very different ways, but the end result is similar, you know. Um, so yeah, I think before we move on to headroom, I just want to take a quick look at the ages because the ages have got something really interesting. Okay, we're talking about um, just the way that we clip and things, and we've had a look at silicon diodes. Um, we had a look at the germanium diodes in the Klon, um, the MOSFETs. So the the ages has LEDs. Right, so LEDs, same LEDs as we find here on our pedals, the little lights. LED stands for light emitting diode. And those LEDs, they act as diodes, but they have a different forward voltage. Huh. So it, the different colored LEDs have different forward voltages. So for example, um, I think the red LED is I think 1.6 or 1.7. And as, as we go up through different colors, we have different ranges of, of um for voltages. So that means that you can actually, if you're using LEDs as the clipping stage in your pedal, you can have different sounds by having different colored LEDs in there. It's awesome. So what the Aegis does is it gives us the option to, to throw in some of those LEDs as part of the gain clipping circuit. Okay. So you haven't, I'm touching this one. Okay. Um, it's got five modes, right? This, uh, first of all, you can mix in your dry sound. So we'll leave that off for a second. Yep. I'll just check that that is actually what that's doing. It's got five modes, two low gain modes and three high gain modes. So we'll go with the low gain modes and you're, we're going to start down with symmetric silicon soft clipping. Okay. And then we are going to LED soft clipping. Okay. Symmetric. So what, do, so the first thing we know about silicon with that higher forward voltage is that it's going to clip a little bit later on than, than say a germanium one. So I'm expecting that to be quite, a gentle uh, with the low with the low gain into it. So if you can hit me on the there we go.
does what it says on the tin. Yep. Um, silicon soft clipping, compressed and smooth. Yep. Uh, LED soft clipping, pushed open and sparkly. Okay, right. I, I you know, I conveniently concur with what it says in the manual. Sure. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so you can hear as the, because the LED clipping has got a different forward voltage than the, um, the silicon diodes, so we have more headroom. There's more dynamic range before the clipping starts. All right. Now we're going to listen to the silicon diodes uh, in soft clipping mode. Yep. And in hard clipping. So modes three and five, symmetric silicon soft clipping, symmetric and silicon hard clipping. Cool. Yep. Yep. <laughs> So they're saying with the with the uh, in this instance with the hard clipping silicon symmetric, uh, we're thick and chewy, and with the soft clipping same business, uh, increased saturation and tighter. Right. Just finally, I'm going to go from the hard clipped silicon yes to soft clipped LED in the high gain mode. Okay. And I'm expecting the LEDs to be a lot louder and a lot more kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Really cool. We should. Uh, we'll come back to the ages in another video because it's super versatile. It's great. Um, sorry, just to finish off, I'm going to mix some of the dry signal back in because we talked about uh, a parallel mix in the context of the clon there. Okay. So I'll put it on. So this, this is really interesting. I'll put it on. I'll leave it on that high gain. Uh, in fact, the high gain soft clip mode. Okay. And then I'll mix in the uh, dry. <laughs> So what is really interesting about that is a lot of people that don't like parallel blend because if you just take your your straight direct signal with nothing done to it and blend that in with your average drive, 
it can sound really harsh. It you just get sounds this, like two different sounds. It does, because me. you get this massive transient yeah, from yeah, your yeah. initial and no sustain. But what they've done there is really clever. So they're obviously EQing it in some way. I think there must be some sort of uh, like a low pass filter on there that's taking out those, those transients, because that is really, really cool. Sounds great. I deliberately turned it up at the end. I think we probably clipped the mic preamps um, because it leads us into our final topic which is headroom, and we're going to do this really quickly because this has been a long video. Yeah. And there's probably some of you out there feeling uh, a little bit beaten by this point. Okay. Um, okay, so so headroom in... Basically, what we're talking about with headroom is dynamic range. And I'll get you to play the clon for this because this is a really great example. So when we're talking about those blocks, mm. right, about we've got our input circuit, we've got our gain, our tone shaping, and then the output. The clon has another circuit in it, yep. which is a summing circuit. So what we were talking about before is that we've got our, um, our gain circuit, right, with our hard clipping diodes, and then around the outside of that we've got uh, another sort of direct circuit, low pass filter, and part of the gain is we've got that dual gain pot on the, on the Gain control. So underneath the gain control on the clon, instead of having one pot, it's got two pots. It, exactly. And as we turn that, it, with the gain turned all the way up, there's a second um, like clean blend, a filtered clean blend that goes uh, around like to that summing amplifier. And as we turn that down, then we get less of that clean blend, more of the um, the clipping, right? Now what happens? You've got those three circuits. There's three lines basically hitting that summing amplifier. And if we take those three and we add them together, you have this massive increased range of amplitude. Right. Right? So the summing amplifier has, it's basically, it's a, it's a TLO72 op amp, but it's, it uses, it's powered by this, um, basically there's 27 volts in there to give this massive headroom. Right, so, so obviously you plug a nine volt in, and there's a little um, power supply chip in there, basically that sends a different sort of power requirements to different parts of the circuit. Yeah. Now, what happens though when you give that much voltage to that particular op amp is it does this thing? It increases what we call the slew rate. Now, in an op amp, the slew rate is basically how fast when a voltage hits the input of the op amp, and by voltage I mean AC voltage that we get from playing this, yep. so we get that up and down. So you hit your string. You hit the string and you're creating an AC voltage. Yep. You're creating a positive and negative. Right. So when the voltage hits that op amp, a fast slew rate means that whatever voltage change we get on the input of that op amp, we get the same voltage change on the output. Right. How long that takes. It, yeah, so we get, it's basically, it, the faster that is, the is how uh, quickly that voltage change we see on the input appears on the output. Yeah. Okay. A slow slew rate, we it basically um, we have this its own form of compression. So, for example, the LM three hundred eight chip that we find in the in the rat has a really slow slew rate, and that is part of the sound. Part of, of the, the sound. Rat, yeah. Okay. Right. However, the ge the genius of the clon and why so many people love it for that. Um, for its detail is because like that voltage is not just giving us this massive dynamic range, but in increasing the slew rate in that particular op amp. So what happens is you can you can hear the printing of the pick that you're using on the string. You know what I mean? It is that fast and that direct. Yeah. So if you turn the clone on for us and, and just you know do your thing, but you'll hear the detail and that's because of that characteristic of the clone.
So, why is that important? If you think about the way that we are creating the distortion with those um, uh, symmetrical hard clipping diodes, right? What's important about the headroom in that stage is that every detail of those germanium diodes is coming through. Yeah. Nothing, no, no part of that is getting lost in a slow slew rate of that op amp. So, you know, we, changing the voltage is one thing at, to giving us that large dynamic range, but that increased slew rate where things are, it, it's so quick and direct. So it's, for me, it's like the Dumble thing. Like, so where you play an amplifier that is so detailed, um, sometimes it can be hard to play because mm. there's nothing, you know, there's nothing to give you that little bit of, uh, you know, sort of compression and, um, you know, it's it's so direct that I remember when I first tried a clon, and it might be when I've had my first two clons, because I got, I got one, that I don't like this, then everyone was going on about them, bought another one, I thought I must be going mad. <laughs> it, they must be amazing. I got another one, just went, no, did one gig with it, no. And it might be because it's, um, like now when I hear it, it's, you know, like, wow, it's it's absolutely incredible. Um, it might be that my playing has developed since I tried it and I'm a bit more comfortable with that level of detail. Well, it also depends what amp you use and what all guitar that stuff you as use well. and all, all that stuff as well. You know, telly, faster, quicker guitar than a Strat. Sure. And so you take fast, quick guitar and you put it's, it into yeah, yeah. fast, that's, yeah, yeah, quick that's true. pedal and all of a sudden yeah. you're like, ah! So, and, and also what we're talking about there is, is transience. Yeah. Those, those, that initial pick on the string, that sound, yeah. you know, why we like the sound of that pick. That's coming through because the transits in it are so quick. Um, so yeah, when we talk about headroom, we're talking about dynamic range, but also has that added thing of the change in the slew rate in the, that particular op amp. Yes, because I think the, the, the more common understanding of headroom is is as it relates to voltage. Yeah. Doesn't it? And in terms of gain, how much gain you can get before compression and nothing else is happening. That's sure. the way I always think of headroom. Yeah. But actually, all of these things that we're talking about today have a tonal relevance you know eq can be heard but it can also be felt yeah and certainly when dan's talking about slew rate of op amps and stuff i mean I, i'll tell you that having played the guitar for 30 years and having done that pedal show for five years now four years th that's the first time i've ever heard anything about slew rate it's right. not something i understand it's something i have never thought about it's not sure. something you should think about when you're choosing your overdrive pedal because it's like wow However, it does explain a lot about why I love the clon so it much. It really does. It really does. So headroom then, let's let's finish off. We always talk about headroom. Mm -hmm. We always talk about the fact that we like high headroom. Yep. What does that mean? Dynamic range. It means that we can you can be dynamic with the with the signal going in, but you know, by the way that you play before we hit compression. Yeah. We've got a pedal on the board that demonstrates this easily and quickly better than any other. We've done it before. It's a prototype of something that Dan and I were looking at. Mm. Um, and it has the option of running at 9, 18, and 24 volts. Yep. And uh, many of you will know from certain modulation pedals, certainly a lot of gain pedals, that they do sound and react very differently depending on what voltage you give them. Yep. Partly as a result of what he was just talking about. Mm -hmm. The slew rate in the op amp is one element well, well, of well, what happens. Yeah, absolutely. The other elements are the amount... Uh, of of gain you get, yep. uh, the amount of clipping that happens. Yep. Well, the amount of gain you get before clipping. So if you imagine that we're, you know, talking about our op amps before and they were hitting a, you know, they were clipping at a certain level. Now, if we if we increase those rails, the, the rails talk about, you know, zero and nine volts, you're going to double that now. So we're giving it that much more room to move before we clip, you know, d depending on the circuit, yep. you know, all that stuff. You might have regulators in there. So doesn't matter if you put nine or 24 volts in there, it's going to regulate everything at five volts. So that will make no difference. Depend it all depends on the circuit. It does. But okay. this is a really good example. So um, I'm going to take you from which it, wherever it's set now, is it 24? So it'll be high headroom, massive dynamic range to low headroom, no dynamic range. Okay.
That was awesome. Uh, I deliberately turned the clon on at the end there. So what you heard was t 24 volts, not much gain, loads of master volume, incredible headroom and dynamic. And when I stuck the clon into that, that enabled the clon to do its thing, mm. gave even more dynamic. Mm -hmm. You could hear the range of the clon. Before the clon was turned on, we went around to nine volts. We reduced the headroom in the pedal. We increased the gain, which also reduces the headroom in the pedal. Um, turn down the master, increase the EQ a bit to get even more saturation and gain going through, and the pedal started to gate. It started to not be able to handle what it was being given, mm -hmm. hit it with a clon, same story. So, I people ask us what headroom is. Yeah, that's it. That's it. And that that exists in pedals, and it exists in amps. So wherever you choose to ride those rails, yeah. you know, wherever you choose to push the headroom to its limit is the maximum you'll get. And that can happen in the pedal or in your amp. Too much, if it's all just completely wide open and clean, hard to play, spiky. Yep. Yes. You know, you play sort of slightly softly and it's nice and then you hit hard and it just punches you in the chest and hurts everyone in the front row. If it's all compressed, Low headroom, loads of gain. You're not getting really any volume variance. You're not yeah. getting much pick attack variance. Clearly, all of us would probably live somewhere in between those two extremes. Yeah. And finding your ratio of gain to headroom is where you'll probably find your favorite overdrive pedal. Perfect. Long show go. today. Yeah. We've talked about headroom. We've talked about mid humps. We touched on transparent. It's related strongly to mid hump. We talked about op amps. We talked about clipping. Mm -hmm. We talked about diodes. We talked about symmetrical clipping. We talked about asymmetrical clipping. We talked about LED clipping. We talked about diode clipping. We even talked about MOSFET clipping, which I didn't know you could do, but um, yeah. I don't know. Are you more confused or are you less confused? Uh, I'm... And after doing the research for this, so many more things make a lot of more sense to me. Yeah. The, the clones specifically, like getting deep into that circuit, looking at what they're doing. Um, yeah, I'm just in awe of the incredibly talented creative designers that are out there doing this stuff. It's amazing. I think I understand why I love Tube Screamers and clones so much. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. With strats. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And I, now I understand better why I don't really like Tube Screamers particularly with the bridge pickup in this thing. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah. However, right. your, your tube screamer does sound magic. Brilliant, guys. Well, I really hope you enjoyed that. Uh, please let us know in the comments. Um, 
A massive thank you uh, to our preferred retailers uh, in the UK and Europe is... Andersons of Guildford in Surrey. Where you could get most of this, I'm assuming. Yeah. Not, not your clon, obviously. Yeah, most of it, I think. Yep. Uh, in Australia. Uh, Pedal Empire of Brisbane, Queensland. Uh, and we have some links. We do. If you click the description box down, there are some links that go through uh, to Sweetwater. And if you use those links and buy stuff, it helps us out. Um, yeah. And also, massive thank you to everyone that's gone to thatpedalshowstore.com and grabbed T-shirts and DNF drives and mugs and hoodies. Yeah, we didn't even promote our own pedal, Dan. I know. What kind of out. marketeers are we? Rubbish. Uh, yeah, journals, all sorts of stuff. Strings. My and that's a nice hoodie. Like they that. are really nice. I'm, I'm not a hoodie fan. They are really nice. Actually. I like them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, cool. Yes. Uh, and also massive thank you to our patrons on Patreon. Thank, thank you, you guys. Really appreciate it. Brilliant. Have a great day. Have a great week. Um, keep safe and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.